Alan Woody here, uh, played bass in the Allman Brothers Band from 1989 to 1997 before he and uh, Warren Haynes left to go do Government Mule full time. This guy right here is as much a reason that I am sitting here still talking about the Allman Brothers today as just about anything. Warren kind of joined the band completely out of obscurity. He wasn't in any major touring bands. Um, he had played with Artemis Pyle, um, Leonard Skinner's former drummer. For a time, he was working at uh, Guitar Shops, Grun's Guitar here in Nashville. Uh, and I have never really tracked down how he ended up on the Allman Brothers Band's radar. But I don't think he and Woody, I'm sorry, he and Warren knew each other prior to joining the Allman Brothers Band. I'm almost 99% positive that they didn't. Now, I'm told Woody showed up for his audition with <laughs> what is um, par for the course for him, a massive collection of guitar, of, of basses, and of amps. He was ready for that gig and basically walked in um, with the Allman Brothers Band and took control of his own destiny um, by playing the shit out of bass over this band that had been going together for 20 years. Woody joined the Allman Brothers Band in 89. They toured uh, on the Dreams Tour for the Dreams Box set that summer. And then in 1990, the band went immediately into the studio and began recording. And they pumped out three albums between 1990 and 1994. Seven Turns, which I really think is their bookend Southern Rock album. I'll talk about that some other time. Uh, Shades of Two Worlds, which really brought back uh, the psychedelic um, into the Allman Brothers sound. And then Where It All Begins, 1994, the last record that this lineup uh, that Warren and Woody played with the Allman Brothers. Woody was also uh, one of the loudest musicians I have ever experienced in my life. Um, this is not my photo. This is a photo from my friend, Chairman One Way. Uh, shout out uh, to the chairman. Um, but I can recall multiple nights standing in front of Woody, uh, looking at this face, including one night when I genuinely thought my heart was going to beat out of my chest with the sound coming out of his amps. I think Woody has just one songwriting credit with the Allman Brothers Band, End of the Line. He might have written another song or two. But again, listen to the originals from that era. And really, if you want to listen to Woody's greatness, listen to the, the three Government Mule albums he made, or frankly... Um, the live, the two live sets that they've released, Live at Roseland, um, which is a single CD, and then they have this massive box set um, from a run um, uh, in Georgia, I think it's called the Georgia Box Set, uh, that features some really just shit-hot playing from Derek Trucks as well. Um, anyway, I just wanted to riff a little on Woody. Uh, side note here real quick, that signature there up in the, up in the corner. Um, uh, the one time I met Woody in my life, or the one time I actually sat and talked to him, he signed my Live at Roseland CD. I'll find it somewhere. And he did a squiggle very similar to that. And I was like, oh, man, he didn't even bother to sign my piece. But actually, that's how Woody signs shit. I just think it's, it's cool as hell. Uh, Woody died in, in 2000 of, of an overdose um, and if you follow anything that I do anywhere on social media, you know that, that um, drug addiction um, hits really close to home for me and, and, uh, and my family. And so, um, you know, it, it's, I, I, I never fail to mention it, not because I'm trying to call Woody out or anybody else, but also to say to those of you who have people um, with addictions and alcoholism in their life, um, uh, that, that I'm with you. Uh, I've been there and those of you who are suffering from it, there is, there is help. And, um, I'm not here for a self-help account, but this stuff just comes to mind as I'm riffing. And, uh, that's all I'm trying to do is riff here. So, uh, listen, long live the Almond Brothers band comes specifically from seeing this dude with the Almond Brothers band in 1993. I was so freaking blown away by how good they were. I've talked about this before here all over my Substack, long live the ABB.com, all over social media. Um, because honestly, without people like Woody who stepped into massive shoes, um, the band, the Allman Brothers band ceased to exist or would have in 1971 when Dwayne died or in 1972 really when Barry Oakley died. So Alan, Douglas Allen, Woody, it was the wood that made it good. Long live the Almond Brothers Band.